In this video, I'm going to show you how to manually update your Dolphin and PCSX2 cores for the Xbox version of RetroArch. Now that RetroArch is starting to see regular updates again, so too are its cores. And while updating to the latest version will give you the latest version of that core that is available at the time, the cores are constantly being updated even if the program isn't. And maybe you don't want to update your program because it involves uninstalling the whole thing and then reinstalling a whole new build and setting it all back up can be kind of a hassle. Thankfully, you are able to update cores without having to update all of RetroArch. And I myself, I'm still running 1.9.4 as I haven't seen a need to update to the newest version of 1.9.6 as of this video's publication. There haven't really been that many UWP specific updates and the ones that are there just don't really seem to add much to the experience. So I'm just sticking with this build until there is an actual worthwhile change. But that doesn't mean I want to lose out on the updated cores. So I'm just going to update them myself and I'm going to show you how to do so as well. Let's dive in. Now, before we get started, this video is a continuation of my How to Install RetroArch version 2.0 guide. If you have not followed my RetroArch guide, there are going to be things that you haven't set up and you will not be able to follow along with this guide as easily. So go back, rewatch my video, especially the part about advanced RetroArch slash dev mode setup and everything after it. But once you have followed that guide and have everything set up, you have your network share set up, you have a way to access the internal SSD from a computer or phone or Mac or whatever the frick you happen to have, we're ready to proceed. And to do so, we're going to head over to RetroArch.com and click on the Download tab. And then from here, we're going to scroll down to near the bottom and click on Nightly Builds. And now go to Windows and click on x86-64. And we are looking for this latest folder that should be right here at the top. This is where the latest version of all of RetroArch's cores are stored and updated. For this particular platform, anyway. And again, RetroArch on Xbox and PC share a number of cores. There are a few exceptions to this. There are specific built angle cores like N64, Dreamcast, and some that aren't compatible with the Xbox like 3DS, Citra. But for the most part, if you ever want to update a RetroArch core, you can download the Windows version and apply it to this tutorial to add it to the Xbox. But today, specifically, we are looking to get Dolphin. So just click on Dolphin and PCSX2, so scroll down until you get to the P's and find PCSX2 and click on that one as well. And once you have both of these downloaded, we just need to get them extracted. They're just in plain zip format, so you should be able to do it just about any program, but I'm just going to tell them to extract here. And that gives us a PCSX2 libretro.dll file and a dolphin libretro.dll file. So these are what we're looking for right here. Now we just need to add these files to our RetroArch install. So if you followed my advanced setup guide like I just mentioned, this is really easy. All you need to do is go into your file explorer, access your development files network share, open up the Windows apps folder, open up your RetroArch folder. Again, I'm still on 1.9.4. They're up to 1.9.6 now as of this video's publishing. But once you're inside your RetroArch folder, we are looking for the cores folder. So just double click on this. And now we just need to add our new files to the course folder. But before you do that, I stress this very, very much. Before you drag those in, find your old versions of them. So my old Dolphin core. We're going to rename it so it doesn't show up in RetroArch, but we still have it in case the new update breaks things that we don't want it to break. So I'm just going to rename the extension .dll back doesn't really matter what you name it just add a one to it or something just to break its uh integration with retroarch basically and then the same thing with pcsx2 there we go so now if i put these new cores into my retroarch install and they don't work i still have the old versions i can fall back on sometimes you get a bad update it just happens but once you have those named, you just drag the new ones right in, and they appear right there. But once you have both of these new cores placed, we can go ahead and close out of our development files file share, head over to the Xbox, and test them out. So I've gone ahead and gotten booted into RetroArch, and now I'm just going to go ahead and load up my Direct3D11 config file. 
as that is needed for both PCSX2 and Dalton. And I'm going to start loading up some games. So we're going to start with PlayStation 2 first, because why not? And the core is booting right up, which means that the new version is not causing us problems. Thank goodness. But going into the quick menu for PCSX2, we could go down to options, and we can see that there are a number of new options that have been added to the system since the uh, 1.9.4 build that I covered in my setup guide. We have a new fast boot option, so this skips the PS2 BIOS. And then you can also boot to the BIOS, so that way you can manage memory cards. I had made a BIOS Q file thing for people to use to do this previously, but now we don't need that anymore. We can just do it right there. And then we also have new memory card storage methods for slot 1 and slot 2 that weren't here before as well as just a number of new video options, including widescreen patch support, aspect ratios, deinterlacing modes, and just a number of extra hacks and stuff that you can set for different PS2 games. So definitely a great update to have on the Xbox version of RetroArch. Should help out a number of games. But probably one of the greatest things about both of these core updates is that we can now actually close out of our content and it doesn't crash RetroArch. Look at that. That is amazing. We could just jump from game to game finally. So now I can just jump right over to a Nintendo GameCube game instead of having to restart the entire freaking program. Of course my GameCube games are on USB so it takes a little bit longer to load up, but that's okay. And if we go into the core options of Dolphin, we could see that there have been a couple of things added down here at the bottom, including fast depth calculation toggle options here, which is needed for some games. But overall performance definitely seems to have been improved on both of these cores, so definitely recommend updating them if you haven't uh, done so in a while. And you could keep updating them as the cores continue to progress. Again, you don't need to download the latest stable builds of RetroArch to get these benefits. But once you've confirmed that the new cores are working to your liking, you could delete the older ones from your course folder so that way they're just not taking up extra space on your internal Xbox SSD. But that's where I'm going to call it with this video. It's just meant to be a quick update guide showing you how to get the latest version of these two particular cores, get them into your RetroArch build so that way you could just take advantage of the increased performance. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this go live. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and we are super grateful for all the growth you all have given us over the last few months. It's been insane. Thank you all so much. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and helps support uh, file share costs and different things like that. And we are super grateful to all of our freaking champions who have done so. Y'all are amazing rock stars. Thank you so much. But that's where we're going to call it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, y'all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.